Hey guys, welcome back to a shorter little episode of Federico Talks Watches. I wanted to discuss a particular Rolex model today, and that's because I don't know if it's going to be a future classic or a future flop. But of course, before we get started, customary wristwatch check. Today I'm wearing my Brellum Duo Box Chronograph. Just did a review on this watch, my new pickup. Uh, really, really enjoying it. Uh, still a honeymoon period. I'm really, really uh, having a lot of fun with it. And of course, go check out DelrayWatch.com. Just got in a couple of vintage Tudor Submariners, including the pretty rare blue one, which is uh, super cool, along with an Omega Speedmaster Reduced, so if you have a smaller wrist, that may be of interest. And I've got a few Rolexes going up Monday as well. So go check it out, DelrayWatch.com, link in the description below. So yeah, guys, I'm sure if you're a watcher of this channel, I always mention watches that are going to go up in value, and I give my reasons why. Uh, Rolex sports models tend to go up, um, but usually the ones that aren't very loved and aren't very well purchased in the beginning shoot up in value later. Uh, point in case, the vintage Daytonas, you know, vintage Daytonas were never really loved, and now they're worth millions. Uh, the Milgauss is shooting up in value. The Explorer 2s, the 40, miller, 40 millimeters, are shooting up in value. Whenever Rolex does something in a short production run, or quirky, or generally not loved at the time, uh, that watch tends to become a classic for collectors and for rarity. And there is a watch uh, that was recently made that right now is very much hated, well, relatively hated, uh, that I don't know if it will go up in value. And I'll tell you why. I think it's rare, uh, well, it's going to be rare because they only made it for a couple of years, but they only made it for a couple of years because it got updated because it was genuinely uh, pretty bad when it came out. And I'm talking about the first generation Rolex Explorer 39mm 214270, the Mark I. Now, the differences between the Mark I and the Mark II, the Mark II is the one made now, are, are a couple. Firstly, the Mark II uses the new blue loom, a blue loom as opposed to the old Super Luminova. So the old one glows green, the new one glows blue. Uh, the old one ha didn't have loom on the numbers, the new one does, but the main difference and the reason they updated it is the old version used hands which looked way too short for the dial. There was even uh, a rumor going around that the, they were just leftover Explorer hands from the 36mm generation uh, that they used. And honestly, they looked ridiculous. I mean, they looked awful. Uh, yeah, the 39mm was super cool when it came out, but everybody was complaining about those hands, and Rolex eventually updated it. And the Mark I 214270 um, was made for a short production run, and, you know, nowadays fetches quite a bit less than the newer Mark II version. Not so much because of the dial, but because of those ridiculous hands. Now, here's the thing, guys. In today's market, as I mentioned, the Mark II, the newer version, is much more expensive. It's still in production. It's much more expensive and generally considered a better watch, at least aesthetically. Now, will the Mark II... Uh, always be worth more? Will the Mark I shoot up in value because it was only made for, for a few years? You know, will the fact that it has those short, stumpy, horrible hands make it a future collectible? I don't know. Uh, I mean, historically, I would say yes, but it would only be for oddity's sake. You know, almost like a mistake in Rolex's production those hands it certainly won't be for aesthetic reasons because it'll never be as handsome as the updated version um it, it looks ridiculous this is just all my opinion of course but i think if it does shoot up in value it'll be because collectors love like the weird short stumpy hands and the fact that it was only made for a short limited run however this is one watch that I don't think has uh, redeemable factors. Now, guys, I think it may sound like I hate this watch. I really don't. I don't think it's that bad. I just think the new one is so much better than the old one that I don't understand how the older one is going to go up in value. Uh, I could be wrong here. However, I'd love your opinion. Do you think I'm off basis? Am I missing something in my analysis? 
Let me know. Honestly, I'm I'm not too sure. I think this one may be a flop, uh, even though historically I'm 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 wrong on that. So guys. Uh, let me know in the comment section below. And also, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. It really does help. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any more content. Guys, thank you so much for joining me for a shorter little episode. And I'll catch you guys back on Monday. Thank you so much and take care.